Okay, starting with number 73. A pizza restaurant charges for each pizza and adds a delivery fee. The cost C in dollars to have any number of pizzas P delivered to a home is described by the following function. C equals AP plus 3. Which statement is true? So this first sentence really is so important because they charge for each pizza. Each often signifies multiply. So you're going to have something, you're going to have a charge times the number of pizzas and adds the delivery fee. When you look at this function, you can see right where the each and the adds happens. 8p has multiplication in, here, in between, so it's 8 times p, which makes perfect sense. The charge per, for each pizza, it's right in order, charge each pizza. So 8 is the dollars per pizza. And then the adds 3, adds 3, well what is 3? Three? 3 is the delivery fee. So let's read our options then for determining the answer, which statement is true. The cost of eight pizzas is $11. The cost of three pizzas is $14. Each pizza costs $8 and the delivery fee is $3. Or each pizza costs $3 and the delivery fee is eight. Well, if you translate that sentence into an equation, we can see that the delivery fee is $3 and that it's $8 for each pizza, so your correct answer is C. If you weren't sure though, you could try plugging in eight and three for P, because P is the number of pizzas, and that would rule out A and B. If you put eight in for P, eight times eight is 64, 64 plus three is certainly not 11. If you put three in for P, eight times three is 24, plus three is certainly not 14. Interpreting what the equation means will help you to determine the correct answer here. The correct answer is C. Number 74, the table shows values of y as a function of x. Which linear equation describes the relationship between x and y? Well, you look at all these equations, all of them are in slope-intercept form. y equals mx plus b. So you're going to have to find the slope to see of the, from the table to see which one matches. Remember for slope, guys, you could choose any two points from the table. I would choose the first two just because they have the smallest numbers. So the change in slope is the change in y over the change in x. 25 minus 10. The change in y is 15. And 6 minus 2, the change in x is 4. Use your calculator to divide this, or 4 fits into 15 how many times? three whole times and a remainder of three-fourths, or 3.75. Which equation then has a slope of 3.75? B. B is the correct answer. You could check that B is the correct answer by plugging in one of these points in for X and Y and seeing if it works. Um, you can plug in all of them, you can plug in one of them, but B is the correct answer because it has the same slope. Number 75 and 76, I'm going to be honest with you, I feel like these are kind of tricky. I feel like they're purposefully trying to trick you a little bit because you really have to pay attention to your labels. So let's look at those first. Before we even read the question, look at what we're comparing. Anytime you see a graph on the keystones, I want you to look at the labels. Read them all the way. Don't skip over them. I know sometimes we do that. You have to look at them. We're comparing the number of gallons in thousands to the amount of bills in dollars. So th these numbers aren't just one, two, three, four. They're actually 1,000, 2,000, 3,000. That's going to impact your answer here. All right, let's read the problem. The graph shows a line of best fit for data collected on the amount of water bills in the relation to the number of gallons of water used. What is the equation of the line of best fit? Well, when you're looking at all of these, one of them has to represent this line right here. Do you notice they all have the same y-intercept? So that's not even in question. But their slopes are what's different. Look at the trend of the line first. From the left to the right, it is heading upwards. It's increasing. So I want a positive slope. That means I can rule out C and D. All right, well, now let's actually find the slope. Find two exact points um, where the, inter the grid lines intersect. So here's a perfect point. 
1 and 14. There's no guessing there. This is not good, not good, not good. Oh, here's another point on the line that's at an intersection of the grid lines. Perfect. Let's count the rise over the run, because that's what slope is. Rise, how much did I rise, over how much did I run? You cannot just count the boxes. You have to look at the labels, guys. Take a look. How much did I rise? If you look here, you might say one. Look all the way over to the y-axis. You went from 14 to 21. You actually went up seven. Your slope then is gonna be seven over something. Look at the, the, the bottom then, how far did you run? Again, if you count the boxes, one, two, three, four, you're gonna think four, you went from one to five. But you have to, have to, have to know that that's in thousands. So you didn't just run one thousand, or four, you didn't just run four, you ran 4,000. The correct answer was B, B a positive seven, 4,000 slope, and then um, the Y is 49. The y-intercept is 49 fourths. Look at 76. If you missed 75, you might have missed 76 as well. Which one represents this graph? Again, before you even look at the equations, let's look at our labels. Please do this on the test, guys. The x is rainfall just in inches. Okay, so these are just regular numbers. The bushels of green means is in thousands. It's right there. Thousands, okay, so let's do this. First thing to look at, look at your y-intercept. My y-intercept is at one, but it's not actually one. Again, you have to know that that's on the y-axis. One actually represents 1,000. So believe it or not, you can rule out B and C because the y-intercept is 1,000. After one inch of rainfall, there are 2,000 bushels. So what's the change that happened? Well, after one inch in rainfall, that's the change in x, x is one. The y went up by not one, but 1,000 again. So your slope is 1,000 or 1,000 over one, and your y-intercept is 1,000. Your answer is D, not C which you might have thought it was, and not B, which you might have thought it was. Make sure when you see a scatter plot, you read those labels first, please. Number 77, Ryan's Restaurant sells hamburgers. The amount, of, the amount charged for a hamburger, H, is based on the cost for a plain hamburger, so the cost for a plain hamburger plus the, an additional charge for, there's that word again, each topping. So each tells you to multiply. So you're going to have a charge, you're going to have some sort of money times T, okay? We don't know what that money is from there, but keep reading and you'll see it. As shown in the following equation. So 0.6 T plus 5. What does the number 0.6 or 6 tenths represent in this equation? Well, since it is with the T, it is being multiplied, you know that it has to be this part over here. It's not just a standalone number. You're going to pay for each topping. So T is the number of toppings. What is the 0 0.6, so the 6 tenths? It's the charge per topping. Let's find that answer here. 0 0.6 is the additional cost for each topping. All right, let's look at 78. A ball rolls down a ramp with a slope of two-thirds. At one point, the ball is 10 feet high, and at another point, the ball is four feet high, as shown in the diagram. What is the horizontal distance, x, in feet that the ball travels as it rolls down the ramp from 10 feet high to four feet high? So this is kind of a weird question, but here's what we're asking. What is the horizontal distance that it happens to go from here to here. Now, this distance is not horizontal, so this is the diagonal, but we don't want to find the distance between those two points. We want to know basically how far left or right did the ball travel. This is the distance I want to find. I think it's helpful to kind of think of this as a graph. So if I was going to, if I know this point is four feet high and this point is 10 feet high, I'm going to just let this be like a y-axis right here. 
and maybe this is my x-axis, okay? So this point is, is like 0, 4, right? I'm not saying I went left or right any, I just, I am up at a height of 4. So over here, I'm at a height of 10. I want to know how far over I went from 0, okay? Let's think about what slope means. Slope means rise over run. So start at your first point and move with that slope until you get to a height of 10. If we were going to rise to, if we added 2 to this, we would end up at a height of, we would end up at a height of 6. And we would be over, we would, if we add 2, we have to run 3. So it would be up 2, over 3, up 2 over 3. That would put us at 3 comma 6. We're still not at a height of 10, so do it again. If you add 2 to the y, you would get at a height of 8. So you went up 2 over 3. That would put you at 6, 8. Then do it again. You would go up 2 over 3. When you add 2 to 8, you would get to the 10. What would your y be? Well, add 3 again, and you would get nine. So think about the horizontal distance. How far did it travel horizontally? Well, I went over three, then over three again, then over three again. So horizontal distance would be nine. And let's finish up this video with number 79. Jasmina has a juice machine that dispenses the same amount of juice into a cup each time the machine is used. The equation below describes the relationship between the number of cups, x, so x is the number of cups, dispensed, x into which juice is dispensed, and the gallons of juice y remaining in the machine. So y is gallons of juice left. Just by writing that in, that might help you. So how many gallons of juice are in the machine when it is full? Well, if it is a full machine, then think about it. How many cups of juice have been dispensed? If it's full, zero is what x is. So if you cover up x when you're solving or put in zero for x, the equation that you would have left is 12y equals 180. Um, 12y equals 180, divide by 12, and y equals 15. So your correct answer would be B, 15 gallons are in the machine when it is full.